Welcome back, everybody, to the many misadventures of Alicia, the Punch Cat. I punch everything for a living. As you can see, I am wearing a new set of armor, a complete full set of armor. This is the Steel Armor set, which at this point in the game is the best armor I can afford and get. I don't really like it aesthetically. Then again, none of the heavy armor sets really look good, in my uh, personal humble opinion. But uh, here we are. I have uh, done a bit of off-screen well, grinding, <laughs> you could say. Well, they're not supposed to look good, they're supposed to be practical. If I can have both worlds, it would be best. Anyway, as you can see, I'm level 9 now. <laughs> and yeah. All I did was doing the first dungeon, the one that leads to the discovery of the first uh, hump or a thump, or however that was called, the uh, first uh, third of Fuzdora, if you will, the first uh, scream. You know. The okay, so for those who don't know, the main character is uh, this thing called Dragonborn, uh, who has essentially a uh, dragon ancestry and. Uh, Dragons are suddenly attacking in Skyrim, so the, that's causing a lot of trouble. So now you know where the story is so far. Yes, the, the dragon screams, or thump, are, well, dragon screams, which have specific powers. And I have gotten the first one doing the first dungeon of the game. I also done the quest in which uh, it is revealed that I am the dragonborn after I killed a dragon. Don't worry. We'll see a bunch more dragons in this playthrough for me to kill. And that's all I really did when it comes to the story. The reason why I didn't record it, because, you know, in order to train my skills, such as heavy armor, well, it involved a lot of just standing around... Standing around like a mannequin uh, waiting for my enemies to hit me and do damage to me. Because this is how you play Skyrim. This is the game. <laughs> you stand around like an idiot. You get hit. Well, if you if you want to go through the annoying way. Yes, well, I wanted to go through the expedite way, but really, if you want to stand a chance to the more powerful opponents later down the road, you need to train your armor. And the best way to do it is to stand around like an idiot, get hit, and then you heal yourself. So you can also train your restoration. Restoration spells and armor skills are your friends. So I'm stealing a bunch of cheese from the giants, which are very dangerous for me this early on. And I'm also stealing their possessions, as you can see. <sighs> I'm going to open this uh, vault. I'm going to open this... Uh, I'm going to open this chest with my lockpicking ability, which I'm really good at. I'm going to open this chest <laughs> with my lockpicking ability, which I'm very... This chest oh, is going gosh. to get opened by my lockpicking abilities. Okay, listen, even if you fail the lockpicking in question, I said lockpicking too many times already, you're still training your skill, as you can see from that bar at uh, the bottom of the screen. I'm still gaining experience points for my lockpicking. Hmm. And uh, so even yeah. if I run out of uh, lockpicks and I fail to open the chest, I still would have trained my skills, so it was not all for nothing. Oh. Yeah, well, I just... Uh, I just loaded if I broke too many lockpicks. Yes, that too. Uh, you still need them for the easier... <laughs> chests. That chest was expert level, which is the second hardest level. But, you know, with enough lockpicks and patience, you can open up every chest you want in the game. Mm. Or, indeed, every gate. I'm going to try and avoid these giants and attempt to train my sneak in the process. 
these giants are very hard to sneak around, as you can see. So, back to my BS, I mean, back to my armor skills. I also trained my smithing skills by improving the armor I have. Uh, the level of improvement is currently at fine. And uh, I believe uh, the armor rating of my gauntlets, specifically, is uh, close to 30? 20 something. So, when it comes to melee combat, unarmed combat, I can do now 12 damage with my natural Kajit mm. ability, plus whatever number the uh, rating of the gauntlets is supposed to be. Essentially, mm. by constantly training your heavy armor and your smithing skills to improve your armor further, you can become a very strong puncher. <laughs> Assassins! And this is oh, my no. first brush with the Dark Brotherhood. I am not quite sure who have I wronged at this point, but... <laughs> oh, am I kidding? I'm Alicia the Punch Cat. Nobody likes me. I punch things. Right, 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 right. Oh! I haven't told you about my goals for this playthrough, have I? Oh, I have yeah. yet to do that. All right, it's time. Oh, you're going to love this. I set myself a few goals uh, for this quest of mine. A few objectives, if you will, and a few bonus objectives as well. Oh, it's going to be a lot of fun. So, goal number one, find the Lover Stone, which is what I'm doing right now. I am running, slogging through the entire continent in order to reach the Lover Stone, which is much closer to the reach area than it is to the central area of Skyrim. So I'm basically traveling towards the leftmost part of the map. That's the first goal. I'll tell you so... why I want the Lover Stone once we get to it. The second goal is to buy a house. Because you cannot be homeless forever in this economy. <laughs> it's bad. Mm. And then we get to the interesting goals. Which would be collect volume 1 and 2 of the last Argonian maid. That's... Th that's a real book. Those are real books available in this game, in case you didn't know. And yes, it is exactly what it sounds like. It's Argonian smut, scaly smut. The Argonian are the lizard people in these games. So yes, that's the end goal, to collect volume 1 and 2 of the Argonian Maid. And after that, there is the final and most important goal of them all which is to read the Argonian Maid in the comfort of your own home, which you bought with your own money. So that's my list of goals for this playthrough. Okay, so essentially you have turned this uh, into a 80 sex comedy. Uh, that's one way of putting it. I like to think this is what really everybody wants when they uh, read a fantasy story, or watch a fantasy show, or play a fantasy game, they are here for the violence and the gratuitous smut. <laughs> Don't lie to yourselves. <laughs> well, I for one are here for the art. Listen, there is a reason why everybody was watching Game of Thrones at some point, and overall it is really not because of the writing. <laughs> Yeah, I tried at one point getting into it, but there was just too many characters and I... Okay, well, have... it was decent for the most part, but then they ran out of the books to adapt, and the ad writers turned out to be mm, hacks. Yes, let's go with that. And, well, everything else is pain. Oh, oh, I have a few bonus objectives as well, which are not obligatory, 
but uh, I can cover them if I try and if I get around to. So, bonus objective number one, join the Thief Guild. Bonus objective number two, get away with murder. Always important to get away with murder. And oh. bonus objective number three, and this is the hard one, perform a German suplex <laughs> on an unsuspecting victim. Uh, I'm not familiar with wrestling. Moves. German suplex. suplex, you have to... Oh, look, it's a literal cat fight. I'm a big cat fighting another big cat. Isn't it funny? Oh. So this is like a uh, human fighting against a gorilla. Basically, yes. And you know saber cats are pretty tough in the early stages of the game. And yet I punched or scratched clawed, if you will, the life out of it in uh, four shots, <laughs> in four hits. That has to be impressive. As you can see, you can take a lot of mileage with this unarmed build if you play your cards right and it's much easier to do with a Khajiit for obvious reasons reasons I've explained already so the German suplex is that one wrestling move in which you place yourself behind your victim grab them by the waist and lift them up over your head and smash them on their neck as you uh, as the momentum drives you do you have the mental picture yeah but i was wondering if scar really has that kind oh of yes move. it has it has one it has been documented it has been proven there are videos about it and it can be done and i did it once in the past but it's very hard and very elusive. You have to essentially have a critical finisher, activate a critical finisher, an execution, if you will, which those tend to be pretty rare in the first place, with your bare hands, both of them have to be free, and you have to place yourself behind them. It's very yeah. rare, it's very hard and elusive, and uh, spoiler alert, I did not manage to do it <laughs> for this playthrough. I managed to oh. unlock another another move. Oh, so you've played the entire game? Oh yes. Oh. Like I said, this is all pre-recorded footage, so I know what I have done, but you don't know. You don't know. <laughs> you will see. <laughs> Uh, oh, oh, and I forgot about the most interesting self-imposition, because there is a rule for this playthrough. There is a very specific rule that I have imposed myself for this playthrough. And that rule is that I am not allowed to use shortcuts. I cannot fast travel, I cannot use horses... I cannot even use carriages to get from one point to another. I have to travel everywhere by foot, back and forth, and back again. Basically, I'm playing Skyrim as I would play Morrowind, if you will. Mm. So, <laughs> that turned out to be a much more time-consuming endeavor <laughs> as a result than I anticipated. Uh, so when you said that one of your secondary objects is to try to get away with murder, doesn't that <laughs> also mean that the Dark Brotherhood quest starts? Or? Um, well... Well, not necessarily. But it's not forbidden. When I say get away with murder, it can be anything along the lines of Oh look, I killed somebody. Oh no, they're going to arrest me. Never mind, I am part of the thief guild. 
so I can bribe <laughs> the guard <laughs> not to look the other way, and thus I have gotten away with literal murder. Or you can cheat even better than that. You can provoke somebody to fight you, and then you kill him, and that will count as legitimate defense in front of all the witnesses. Or, you know, even more straightforward than that. You just intrude into somebody's home at night, kill them in their sleep, and nobody will be the wiser. And in the best case scenario, I even get their inheritance because they were friends. <laughs> you can be yeah. an unbelievable evil bastard in this game. And yeah. there are no real tangible consequences to do this. This is why I say that this game is a sandbox for your debauchery. Because you can get away with everything and anything with real minimal consequences consequences there is no moral compass whatsoever in this game which is the exact polar opposite of uh, something like fallout 3 where an invisible godlike force judges you harshly for taking a cup in a random deserted home in the middle of the wasteland which is utter nonsense yeah i haven't played that game it's not good, I hate it. I don't like Fallout 3 in the slightest. But I do love Skyrim, I don't know what does that say about me as a person, or indeed as a gamer. The yeah, only thing I know about Fallout 3 that apparently it has many good quests, but the main plot is utterly stupid or something. Yes, honestly, since I have the uh, complete edition, I could do the Dongard DLC quest, which is lengthy, and it's basically a Castlevania story. So I'm going yeah. to complete raid a few dungeons along the way to my first goal, which again is the Lover Stone, because I need to train my skills, you see. <laughs> I still need to do that. Um. Did you say lower as in going low or lover? No, no, as no, in lover, the lover, the lover stone. You will understand why I want the lover stone. All right, we can get a. Ah, I should say I can get a side quest from this dungeon the Red Eagle Sword. So this dungeon cannot be opened or explored unless you have the Red Eagle to slap in that slot over there. The Red Eagle's sword, to be specific. You need the Red Eagle sword to open the way to fight Red Eagle himself, which is a very angry, powerful, undead Nord. And the undead Nords are called Grogner, I believe. Or was it Gogner? Honestly, I forgot. Aren't, <laughs> aren't those the ones that teach you all those oh, dragons? Oh, no, 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 no. Drog, Drogner. Something along those lines. I don't remember their name. They are zombies. They are zombies with swords. Done. End of, end of the story. I don't care. I kill them. Drogner, I think. I think it was Drogner. You know what? I'm not even going to look it up. I just don't care about lore. <laughs> uh... Right, so lucky for me, the Red Eagle Sword just happened to be in the next dungeon over. Or rather, the next settlement. And uh, now you will watch me kill me a bunch of Forsworn, which I remind you, they are the natives of the rich area, the leftmost part of Skyrim. They were, well, colonized, for lack of a better term, by the Nords. And they are heavily indigenous coded, stereotypically so. So me killing them without mercy really feels uncomfortable. 
because mm. of that. Oh, I mean, look at this. Look at this. Doesn't that scream indigenous coded <laughs> to you? I guess. Uh, I'm... When I say indigenous coded, it doesn't mean they are an accurate portrayal of indigenous people of any kind. They are a stereotypical, sort of commonly understood by white men vision of what natives, indigenous people, look like. With their pelts and uh, uh, horns and... Uh, of naked mm -hmm. attires and it's pretty one. bad it's pretty bad it's pretty racist once you get down to it once you start digging down into uh the subtext and i'm glad i don't care about the lore of this game otherwise i would enjoy it a lot less yeah, i do wonder that uh because it uh happened like thousands of years ago when the Nords came to... It's... they are them. at war at this very minute. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I was wondering that if the Nords uh, remember anymore the origin of their heritage, so maybe... The Nords... The Nords, as I said, they claim that Skyrim is their ancestral home, because of course they do, and they conveniently forget that they have settled here so, yeah. you know, it's uh, Manifest Destiny, if you will, the Viking yeah. edition. <laughs> yeah, so I was we'll just tell them that, hey, this is how the things really went. And they were like, oh, I, w I had no idea. Now I feel just a jerk. Now, they will most <laughs> likely reject your opinion and kill you on the spot because, you know, Skyrim belongs to the Nord and if you don't agree, you're a traitor and you need to get out of Skyrim because the Nords, the Stormclocks, are going to make Skyrim great again. Yeah. Yeah, well, the Stormclocks are the, really the problem. So well, not... okay, a lot of people amongst the Nords. The Nords are the statistic majority, the majority population in uh, Skyrim. And as the majority population, they might not be aware of uh, issues relating to systemic racism because they are too busy surviving on a day-to-day -day basis. And uh, it's easier to keep them ignorant, which makes the recruitment much easier. Besides, have you mm. noticed that all the Nords are white? Mm. Yeah, it happens when you live in the North, it kind of... Uh... They are based off Vikings. They are essentially based off Viking populations. But yes, yeah. the entire population of the Nords is uniformly white. Then you have the Breton, which uh, have a more brown skin and you have the red guards which are supposed to be arabian coded in that sense i'm not saying any of these portrayals are accurate or sensible i'm just stating that this is clearly what they were going for when they developed the game and uh, when you have a group like the Stormclocks, which is supported by most of the population or at least half of the population thus gaining traction with their nationalistic propaganda because in truth people are not happy with the status quo of the empire for valid reasons then you have a situation that essentially mirrors a lot of today's politics and this is a game from 2011 and i think the intent was that at least yeah. I do like that this co there's no clear good guys in this conflict. I mean, it's it's good in a sense, but then it has to be more nuanced than just oh, both sides are in the wrong. Because that's yeah. just the most basic both siding you could possibly do. So your choice is between the empire, the oppressing empire, and their hideous status quo or their storm clocks and their nationalistic no other races allowed agenda which might result in 
much worse long-term or short-term issues as soon as the High Elves of the Dominion get involved. And I mentioned the High Elves before. Essentially, during the 400 years between the events of Morrowind and Skyrim, the Tamriel... I think, no, 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 between Morrowind and Skyrim, I believe. Uh, Oblivion happened uh, somewhere in between that. The Empire of Tamriel was soundly defeated by the Dominion, which would be the realm of the very snooty, elitist, bigoted elves. Nobody is good (laughs) in this uh, conflict. Mm. So as a result, they forged a pact. And uh, the most uh, salient point about this pact was the banishment of the worship of the Adric Prince Talos, the hero god, if you will, uh, from uh, the region of Skyrim or indeed in any other region because of that. And of course the Nords who worship Talos were not happy about it. So they had a valid reason to start a rebellion to not standing around letting the oppressors oppress them. But unfortunately, as I said before, they have a very specific, very racist, uh, nationalistic agenda. And a victory for them would be terrible because then the I Elves might just say, well, I guess we have to kill everybody now. <laughs> Because the eye helps of the Dominion are also douchebags. Yeah. So on top of everything else, there is the looming threat of the Dominion. And really, all of this is tendentially much more interesting than, than the dragons attacking. And really, the dragons attacking doesn't really feel like the main quest at this point. It feels rather... Just more trouble added on top of this cake of trouble that already exists. Yeah, I think one of the main bad points in this main quest is that it goes to this once again the same chosen one plot formula. I I really like the political stuff because I had missed that since Daggerfall, but uh, I didn't... don't like it because it's. Overly simplistic and utterly misguided, and it both sides, essentially, constantly. Well, I guess one side is bad, but the other side is also bad. Whom do I choose? Their attempt to have a nuanced political debate is pitiful. Anyway, so I retrieve Mm. the sword, I open the way, and I'm going to fight the boss. And by fight the boss, I mean I'm going to cheese it. Because, as you can see... This is why you want to train your sneak and your archery, because you can just venture tentatively into the room, snipe them from a distance, and retreat before they notice who's sniping them, which leads them to wonder, hmm, I guess must have run away, hmm, must have been my imagination. Yes, your imagination just sniped you. (laughs) <laughs> with an arrow. This is the game. <laughs> this is Skyrim. You can do this in Skyrim. <laughs> this yeah. will take a while, <laughs> folks. <laughs> yeah, basically you're just uh, playing this on very easy mode. I am fighting a boss like this. A boss that would be too spicy for me at this point. And I am training my archery and sneak in the process. And as you mm. can see, that boss has a lot of HP, so... Again, this will take a while. Yeah, Skyrim around at the speed of sound. <laughs> Got places to be, gotta kill this boss. Uh, I'm training my archery and my sneak. I'm doing really great, I, I, and this will take a while. So, as you I can you see, can. we are stuck. This is how Skyrim plays. If you do know what you're doing, you can cheese it like a proper nonce, nonce it out, <laughs> set me free, beat this boss with archer and uh, uh, sneak skills, and there you go. 
This is the entire boss fight. Unbelievable. The fact that I can yeah. do this is hilarious. I love this game. Yeah, I, I guess power players can get satisfaction by figuring out all these ways how to cheat the system. Yes, this is my favorite thing to do with these kinds of games. They are broken on a variety of levels design-wise, and you can exploit that to your advantage. And uh, figuring out the puzzle to do this in the most efficient way possible, albeit not the fastest way possible, is very yeah. satisfying to me. I am the kind of gamer who enjoys finding out way to cheese it. <laughs> Mm. I discovered this for myself. So yes, I killed Red Eagle, the mighty Red Eagle, and this quest is soundly resolved. <laughs> mm. I love the fact that we drowned the genocide of the Forsworn natives and all that with our lore talk, which went... <laughs> Anywhere and everywhere at the same yeah. time. Nowhere and everywhere. Yeah, if you want a nuanced political discourse from a Fetesta Podrus game, I guess Fallout New Vegas is a better choice. No, if you want the best and most nuanced political discourse to be implemented in any game whatsoever, you need to play Disco Elysium. It is a masterpiece. Honestly, it raises the bar for RPG the video game writing this high. And everyone else feels childish and juvenile by comparison. Certainly Skyrim. <laughs> yeah. Right, so if I were to prefer a light armor build, I would definitely wear the Forsworn outfits because i have a soft spot for that really dicey in indigenous coded <laughs> dress wear <laughs> that sounds awful i just like how it looks on my lizard lady in the other game file i have fun fact mm -hmm. about the argonians their skull their skulls their craniums are not uh, well fitted for <laughs> literally every cap, helmet, or headwear in this game. They will always look wrong on their heads, especially heavy armor. <laughs> mm. uh, something about heavy armor. Yes. Something about heavy armor. No, that was the end of the thought bubble. I did not plan to expand on it. Yeah, I kind of zoned out for a second. Right. Well, so... don't worry. So... Okay, I think we are alpha way through. <laughs> oh, we're still searching the love stone. The lover stone, uh, it's not really um, that much of a search. I, I placed a customary custom arrow on the map so i just have to follow but it it's because you are uh, looking for uh, the lover stone and the two pieces of legendary smut i have a feeling there's some kind of connection there but i'm afraid no 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 what. okay okay i aside from the obvious joke, there is no real connection between the two. I just want the Lover Stone for its very specific boon that it can give you. Again, once we get there, you will see the boon. And you might want to consider visiting the Lover Stone if you plan to ever play this game again. It's very useful for maximizing your training experience. So to speak. Right. So the journey ahead is still long and... So I get that Skyrim looks tentatively pretty when you can 
admire its landscape during daytime. But, but then the fog descends and everything looks like a bog, grey, generic, modern game <laughs> setting. It looks that's like Finland. Well, I guess you can probably. relate to that. Well, this is based off the northern regions of Scandinavia. The entire landscape is essentially supposed to be yeah. a shorthand for the entire geographical area of Scandinavia with its uh, snowy yeah. uh, set pieces yeah. and its vast valleys without the snow for a change. Yeah, Finland. Although Finland doesn't have these tall mountains, those are all in Norway. Yes, well, Norway is part of Scandinavia. And speaking of uh, speaking of the Nords and the Scandinavia, um, the Nords have a Sweden accent for obvious reasons, for the most part. Because some some of those have an Austrian accent inexplicably. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which is hilarious to me because you hear these people talking with a light Swedish accent that's very recognizable. And then all of a sudden you find this guy at the court of the first Jarl yeah, of white true. one that talks like Schwarzenegger. Yeah. And I am yeah, just it... having a fit of laughter. <laughs> yeah, it feels like there have been... a Two different voice directors who both have a different idea of what a Nordic accent should sound okay, like. Okay, so... Alright, basic lessons of geography. Uh, Austria doesn't have anything to do with Scandinavia. <laughs> Just so you know. Yeah. Culturally, geographically, completely different. So, to be fair, people have to thought that I have I am German because of that's my because accent. most people can't tell an accent from another especially Americans yeah. you have a slight foreign accent oh you are from Europe city <laughs> yeah I've also been taught to be a Russian oh, look at this. a French look at this an look at Armenian, this a Cuban I entered the oh. cave uh, while sneaking, I get spotted. I leave the cave. As I'm getting spotted, my sneak improves. <laughs> this is the game. <laughs> this is the game. <laughs> yeah. uh. Oh, I love these uh, little moments that I fumble upon, including the yeah. occasional uh, bug. Uh, speaking of which, have you fumbled upon many bugs during your playthrough of Skyrim? I I mean, uh, most of them were the kind of uh, little glitches that I don't really remember, and I didn't encounter much of those uh, really legendary bugs that people have been talking about. Oh, I've Except met some this... of them. Yes. Yeah. The only one that I can remember is that uh, because this uh, main bad guy, Dragon Alduin, is trying to resurrect his friends, and you occasionally meet him doing that, but then one time he kept all his speech at the grave of one of his friends, but the friend didn't rise up. And as the result, uh, Alduin was just there flapping his wings and uh, looking at, the, at me awkwardly. Well, that is awkward. So one of the most famous bugs would be mammoths suddenly uh, taking off like Dumbo flying into the heavens, right? Yeah, I never. I that. have seen the opposite of that. I've seen mammoths spawning in the middle of the sky and then falling to their deaths. Oh, <laughs> that was incredible! <laughs> oh, yeah. and there are a few interesting bugs uh, that I managed to catch in this recording as well. They are not as extravagant as you know. Um, gravity-defying mammoths, or not at all gravity-defying mammoths, as it were, but they are still pretty funny. Okay, so it's more difficult to train a skill? What happened there? I have no idea what happened there. I think the game was trying to play an execution cutscene, but it glitched out, so we had that weird moment 
in and which it just some kind of fumbled weird, upon itself. Weird colored uh, stuff. Oh, that is flammable liquid. It's not piss, it's flammable liquid. Don't worry. <laughs> so I was if, wondering say, if there was yes, something. You can do this. So sometimes you have this uh, flammable liquid on the ground. If you had a flame spell and you really have that as a base spell as you start the game, so you will always have it, you can use it to set enemies on fire if you want. And set yourself on fire, too. <laughs> if you're not careful. Yeah, I guess... Uh, I'm willing to forgive these games for the bugs. Because I understand these are big sport. I mean, Skyrim is like 36 square kilometers huge. It's a so... huge game with a lot of content to go through. Yeah, it's only natural that at one point it's... Uh, kind of shaking under its uh, weight. Yes, but I cannot forgive how stupid the NPCs are. Because again, you, you've seen how easily you can cheese a boss fight like that. Yeah. All I had to do was snipe him, hide behind a rock, wait for him to stop being curious about the sniping, and then rinse and repeat. And you can do that with literally every enemy in the game, inside a dungeon, even multiple enemies at once. You can hit them from a distance, hide, and then do it all over again, and do it for all the enemies inside a room. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, as I said in the previous episode, I guess the makers of this game see all the players as this kind of an... Uh, Immersion players, that of course they're going to have an epic one-on-one -on -one battle with them. Why would they want to see it? That would be really I, epic, would it? I think it's less on the developer side and 100% on the executive side saying, yes, this is good enough, let's ship this product. And honestly, yeah. the console version of Skyrim works much better than the PC version because inexplicably... The console version has its physics engine severely hampered, severely limited. I think the physics engine in the PC version is a prime cause for all the glitches and bugs. So ironically, by having a worse version of Skyrim on your console because of the severely hampered physics engine, Makes the game better. Hmm. Figure that one out. At, le at least all uh, Elder Scrolls skills know how to build atmosphere while traveling. Oh yes, uh, they are very atmospheric in that sense. And like I said, Skyrim can be to this very day. Which, you know, it's almost 10 years old to come to think of it. Jeez. Hmm. Can still be a pretty game to behold. Uh, with the right lighting, and, well, at least the lighting and the shading in this game are top-notch for the most part. I enjoy having my character just standing nearby a fireplace to uh, witness all the light reflecting on their skin, on their bodies. It really makes you appreciate the effort that was put into the craftsmanship of this really huge game. Mm. So as you can see, I am once again chasing it with the sneak, because I'm trying to get them up and close from behind. I'm trying to go for the German suplex, which, again, I did not manage to do. It's very hard and very rare. I'm sure there is a very specific way to do it, but I wanted to figure it out on my own. I didn't. But hey, um, in my other game file, the one with the Argonian, I managed to perform a Death Valley Driver move. Which is, you take the opponent 
over your shoulder in a fireman carry position, and then you drop them on the Where base of their neck. That's what I was trying to figure out, actually. <laughs> I get turned around easily in these games to my chagrin. So I really have to rely on the map and the pointers, which leads me to constantly and without fail trying to climb unclimbable mountains and after time succeeding through sheer grit. Because yes, it is possible to climb the mountains by constantly jumping and eventually locking up on an invisible hotspot. This game, <laughs> this game, man, <laughs> this is the game. <laughs> I love it, like I said. It's one of those cases in, in which its many glitches and bugs give the experience character. And uh, they make the experience enjoyable. Without flawed design choices to exploit, to have fun poking around, Skyrim would be uh, a pretty forgettable game otherwise. It would be Fallout 3 all over again. Hmm. Sure, competently made on the surface, but infuriating on many subtle, nuanced mm. elements. Yeah, but my little brother owned uh, Fallout 3 and uh, he uh, said that I could do whatever I want with it, so... Oh, oh, look at this. She's staring right at me, in my eyes. And she's just standing there, menacingly. Yeah. <laughs> I, just, I love this. <laughs> just, we're Maybe having a... Just... <laughs> Go on, make your first move, you bitch. Oh, oh and uh, yes, I... Uh, th this is incredible. It, she spotted me, clearly. But she's not coming to kill me. <laughs> she's just standing yeah. there, waiting for me to sniper with my arrows there oh my god yeah, <laughs> <bitch, bitch. laughs> yeah. well i guess you'll die mati mm. mati yes this is the game <laughs> yeah this is the game this is the game <laughs> That's not even the funniest thing that will happen to me on this playthrough. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> I'm certain of it, if I remember correctly, but it's certainly one of the most unforgivable bugs. <laughs> mm. Oh, So how long do we have? Okay, so we are close to our goal, relatively speaking. Oh, soon you will be found the infamous lover stone. It's not infamous at all. Why would you assume it's infamous? Because it's called lover stone. Well, it's... Yeah, because the gods are bestowing their love upon you. <laughs> Duh. Oh, it's that kind of love. I think I could be wrong. <laughs> yeah... Yeah. Yeah, I just thought it was some magical item that makes you more virile or something. That just would be little... fun, but it would also be a completely different game or mod, yeah. if you will. I'm sure something somebody made to... a mod. <laughs> something to spice the bedroom. And... Well, uh... listen, the last Yargonian made is everything you will ever need to spice your bedrooms. <laughs> And I increased my sneak again. Uh. Yeah, and that thing out of sight of this. And now I think the guy notices you. Okay, well, we have to switch to melee now. Or do we? Damn it. Yes, otherwise I will die. I'm not very resistant to magic at this point, or fire. 
So this makes me laugh because I remember how much harder this portion of the game could be when I was trying to build my one-handed combat character, mm. but with my bare-handed combat as a Khajiit, this is almost insultingly easy. <laughs> uh. mm. Yes, exactly, yawn. Except I am excited because it's so easy, because yes, I found a way to make this game even more interesting by choosing the least convenient, the most not recommended path. Yeah. So you can, contrary to popular belief, you can build yourself as a monk in Skyrim. You just need to know how to do it. Hopefully, this so, videos that I am making will provide that sort of education. <laughs> so kind of like building a bard in D&D. &D. Um, well, the bard is more of a jack of all trades, really. Can do magic, can do distant attack, can do melee. Um, you are basically a bard in Skyrim. Except you max out all your stats eventually and you become a god. Yeah. Yeah, Skyrim is more of a power fantasy. It's... They're all power fantasies in their own right. Except in the previous games, there were proper classes that you could take. In Skyrim, you choose the race, and then you just uh, train whatever skill you want, and you can literally be whatever you want at any point in time, without really any consideration for specific uh, class limitations. And at first, this uh, annoyed me, because I tend to be more old school when it comes to RPGs. And I was annoyed also at the leveling up system, because you level up once you train your individual skills up until to a point, and then your overall stats can level up. Yeah, I did I not was... like that at first, but I definitely um, came around on it, as you can see. Yeah, I was more referring with a power fantasy kind of also in the Story-wise, because the... Um, Story-wise is so poor and uninteresting. Oh, you're the chosen one. Who cares? I don't care about becoming the chosen one of the gods and saving the world. I care about just... What I really care about is to... Porn. Uh, sn <laughs> you know, <laughs> to sneak around in a dungeon, kill somebody from behind, and feeling really good about it. <laughs> Yeah. What they care about is managing to sneak into somebody's house, steal everything they have, and get away with it. The smaller things, succeeding at the smaller scale things, the things that are not glorious or adventurous, are is what uh, makes this power fantasy worthwhile because yeah. it is the kind of thing you're not supposed to do there is a consequence to do this no 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 except there isn't really and uh, as soon as you find out you can do everything you want in the worst possible way well <laughs> then you just raid an imperial or stormclops camp kill everybody on there Except the commander, which is yeah. unkillable, and you find yourself an eternal sparring partner to train your heavy armor skill. And yes, I definitely did that <laughs> at some point. Yeah, Skyrim is a more a gator to. Oh, no, I was a really, I was a real monster too because I kept on killing them and then use fast healing on them. Uh, I should say the healing hands to. Cure them, to heal them, so that I can kill them again. <laughs> yes. Uh, so this is an interesting little quest. We're going to help out a hag raven, half raven, half old lady, to kill her own sister and reclaim this fortress. Hmm. So are you going to kill her too? I could... 
But I chose not to. I kind of like her. She has a bit of a witty dialogue, which we, you cannot hear at the minute, but it will be present in uh, the final product once I put uh, everything together. I will let you leave because you amuse me. Okay, I am not playing that character here. That will be the Argonian on the other game file. I'm trying to be a sneaky thief. Which, come to think of it, it's a bit of a stereotype, an unfortunate stereotype with Khajiit. They are seeing as the low-class, uh, underbelly, thieves, robbers, burglars, and general criminals. Uh. And, as you, and as you know, this is fantasy, which means that all the uh, racism is actually canon <laughs> and truthful. Which yeah, makes yeah, all the racism like... kind of justified, which is retroactively awful and disgusting. So kind of life halflings in D and D because they are also stereotypically yeah, the honestly, thief class. Honestly, fantasy is the worst, generally speaking, when it comes to um, reducing all your fantasy races into a bunch of stereotypes, which are addressed as canonical. Truths? Yeah, yeah, that is all partially because of the metagaming aspect, as the halfling as tends to have the strongest dexterity, and uh, dexterity is very useful for thieves. And you wonder why there is gatekeeping in these communities? Yeah. Okay, so I'm training my potion making, my alchemy, because I really want to level up at this point. I have a bunch of ingredients I've collected along the way, so I'm making a bunch of potions that I will never use. But at least I will be able to sell them. Yeah, I always hoard those uh, healing items until the important battles. Yes. Well, aside uh, from the healing items, nothing else is of any use. I definitely don't have any use for poisons, because... I cannot apply them on my weapons because I'm fighting with my bare fists. Sadly, I cannot apply poison on my knuckles. <laughs> that would be fun, but I can't. Maybe you... Maybe in the next uh, LS Cross game you could use poison to make kind of a bomb that you could throw. Here's what I want from the next Elder Scrolls. If I can even play it, because at this point Microsoft owns the parent company of Bethesda, which is a can of worms, a capitalistic can of worms in its own right. But either way, what I really want from the next Bethesda, from the next Elder Scrolls, they would have to reinstate a proper unarmed melee combat skill tree, so that I can get to a point in which I can one-punch man everything. I want to be able to kill dragons, or the equivalent of dragons, with one punch. One punch! Because that would be the ultimate power fantasy to me. I don't want giant swords, I don't want cool looking swords, I don't want to be able to sneak around with my impressive archer skills, I want to be able to punch dragons. <laughs> Yeah, I want a proper political intrigue plot a la Duckerfall. Oh, hold, hold on there, Tiger. Let's not, let's not get ahead of ourselves. <laughs> yeah. Duckerfall seems to have the best plot of all of these games, but it doesn't work. The game is too bucky. Consider that that was the time before Bethesda, I think. Bethesda wasn't always the owner of the Elder Scrolls, I think. I believe at well, some point they bought all the IPs. Am I well, mistaken? You know more the, about this than I do. Am I mistaken? Uh, well, they are all developed by Bethesda, but I'm oh. not... Oh, so it was a Bethesda of a different kind, a different creature, clearly, in the 90s. Yeah, at some point have... it became a huge company and corporation and things had to change. Yeah, I guess the 
Zenimax is the parent company. But yes, I'm... that is the parent company. That Zenimax happened. That's the problem. Zenimax happened, and it happened all over Bethesda and all the other gaming companies that they bought. And now Zenimax, well, Microsoft happened. Microsoft happened to Zenimax, which will also happen to Bethesda and id software. Mm. I'm not looking forward to see what will become of all this veritable needle's nest. Uh, Microsoft's g gaming section have tried to heal its reputation that it from the I am not buying a freaking Xbox ever. <laughs> I mean all that comes to Xbox, comes also to PC. Yes, that's also pointless. If I have to buy something new, it would have to be a new computer. But I really want my console gaming to be limited to my Sony machines and my Nintendo machines. Thank you yeah. very much. I guess there's also the Xbox Game Pass that is available for PC. Okay, so the reason why I bother to check out any and all books in this game is that they might actually instantly level up one of my skills. Oh yeah, some books do that. That's why I, I ever even bother to read books. Well, read is a strong word, but you get the idea. Open yeah. them. The only lore, the only narrative and literature that matters is the last Yargonian Maid, which is the long-term goal of our quest. A quest for glorious smut. Oh, is that smut uh, not We're safe We're almost for there! Work? Oh, no, no, no. It is extremely elusive. <laughs> Don't worry about it. That's mm. what makes it real funny. <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't like porn. It just removes all the mysticism from sex. It's uh, soft uh, erotica more than pornography. It's, like I said, okay. it's okay, very elusive. It alludes on thing. It, it alludes on the sex. It uses mm -hmm. figures and metaphors, and that's what makes it hilarious. What do you think is the best sex scene in a movie? None. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I cannot think of one legitimately that would be satisfying on, well, different levels. Because, you know, th okay, there is one film that has the most realistic sex scene that I've ever seen, and that would be uh, Blue is the Warmest Color, based on the graphic novel of the same name. But at that point, it's basically pornography, and... It's bad for other reasons. Uh, in my opinion, the best movie sex scene is in ter the first Terminator movie. Oh, I guess it's an underrated classic, but why are we even ranking sex? Usually sex scenes are the least interesting part of any and all films, unless yeah. you're watching pornography, that is. Because they cannot show everything clearly for rating issues. And they are not really interesting, usually from a narrative or character development angle. They merely exist to be the moment in which adult audiences get titillated with the yeah, idea I was of it. Yeah, I of something to talk about when we <laughs> get the subject of an erotica fiction game to... Look at me! Defying gravity, climbing up a waterfall, jumping... From mountain ledge to mountain ledge, doing what I am clearly not supposed to be doing to reach my oh, destination. Wow. Yes, this is the game, Matty. And boy, howdy, when I figured out how I can avoid taking full damage by hugging the mountainside while going down. Oh boy, a whole new world was opened up to me. A world full of shortcuts that I can actually take. And we mm -hmm. have discovered... The Lover Stone. Hooray! Oh, okay. It's not the kind of stone that you Those take into the your inventory. Those under the lover always feel a lover's comfort. All skills improve faster. Ah. 
So all of my skills improve, uh, have a 15% improvement factor added to them. Hooray! Yay! I'm jumping out of joy for completing okay, my quest. Okay, I thought quest. it was a stone that you take in your inventory and carry with you. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, those stones, you go to them and you get their blessings and then you have this blessing permanently on you until you switch them up with uh, another stone's blessing. But anyway, we did it! This was the first goal, and it only took us an hour of aimless traveling, mountain climbing, and dungeon crawling on the side. So, getting those books is going to be a cinch, right? It's going to be very easy and fast to do, right? <laughs> you at least know their location? Well, of course I do know their locations. I wouldn't be doing this if I didn't know them. <laughs> Yeah. Imagine that. I'm aimlessly wandering about for a hundred hours before I find volume one and two of the last Argonian made. But no, I know exactly where to find them. And in fact, there are multiple locations from where you can get them. But we're going to be targeting two specific locations. One very, very far away. The other much closer than you might think. We're going to be getting to Volume 1 before Volume 2, which means we have the long journey uh, ahead of us. The, the Arconian maid was inside you all along. Wink. That's... <laughs> I'm sorry, are you calling me a furry? <laughs> or a scaly? How dare you, sir? I'm an intellectual. <laughs> okay. Not... Okay, okay, but all jokes aside, this was session number two, episode two, if you will, of Alicia the Punch Cat. So to recap, we traveled to the far uh, leftist side of Skyrim, to the rich portion where the Forsworn live. Well, used to live before they met me, mm. that is. <laughs> and they attack and... <laughs> you without any provocation. I meant to kill them on sight anyway, so <laughs> then, uh, yeah, they did. A, they were right in attacking me. For all they knew, I was just another invader. Anyway, yeah. so we reached the Lover Stone. We have gotten the blessing of the Lover Stone, which will allow for all my skills to train faster. It's a great thing to get at uh, the start of the game, let me tell you. So now we have to venture all the way back and all the way to the rightmost part of the map, which means we're going to be traveling for a while because, as I said, I'm not allowed to use shortcuts in this playthrough. That's the self-imposed rule. <laughs> and that rule was imposed why? to make the game more challenging and long. Otherwise, it would be over in five minutes. Yeah, otherwise I'd have to use my time on something productive. You. <laughs> well, I also wanted to have plenty of time to have uh, lengthy chats about the oh, yeah. game at hand, which is, you know, something you can always do with ease when you have to track for a long period of time. And also you might find random encounters, such as dragons, or random mm. glitches and bugs, new dungeons that you have not discovered previously. It's an adventure, Matty! Breathe it in! It's the adventure, the quest for pornography! Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, I love this. I really love this. So, uh, thanks for joining us, everybody. I have been Mad Dog. The one who never stops talking, and uh, the other one has been Matty, the one who occasionally chips in to say his piece. Yeah. If you don't have anything sensible to say, don't say anything at all, as, my, as Bambi taught me. Well, in that case, I should never open my mouth, period, then. <laughs> uh, Self-deprecation for the win. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Good night. Punch! Little button. Clever trick, yes. Nobody ever thinks.